but it's all a lot harder than it seems. So if this, uh, if this seems hard, it's even, it's even harder than that. Because after all, let's say that you have Let's say that these are the products from the total acid hydrolysis. So what amino acid did we start with? NaSN. Yeah. We must be over here. We started with asparagine. Okay. That was the easy one. Another easy one. What was the original amino acid here? Good. Of course, this is unrealistic because usually after hydrolysis you get a bunch of amino acids, but I'm just focusing on the ones that are of interest to us here. And here's the hard case. of these. I think in many cases you're not going to know how many equivalents you had of these. Actually, maybe we should actually look at a problem. Maybe I should, all right, maybe I should get into, into, into this because I'm not remembering whether you usually know how many equivalents you have of this or not. Um, oh, well, let's, let's say we have one equivalent. Okay. Let's say that we know we've got one equivalent of each of these. Mm -hmm. Now we cannot tell for sure what the original amino acids are, but we, there's two possibilities. Right, because the NH4 plus could be pertaining to the ASP or the GLU. That's, That's right. why you said the equivalence matters, though, right? That's right. That's the right the equivalence do okay. matter. So what are the two possible starting materials we could have had here? So it could have been GLN or AS. So if we started with glutamine, what would the other one be? ASP, it has to be. It would be That's right. Because the NH4 plus would be used for the glutamine. That's right. Okay. The NH4 would have, would have come from the hydrolyzing oh, of the glutamine. Right. Or... GLU plus ASN. And then the NH4 would come from the ASN. Okay, there's still other complications because unfortunately there's other possible sources of ammonium, but that, that will, this, this gives you the basic ideas. So this gives you some of the basic ideas for some of the basic clues that we have to use for, for doing this detective work. We don't want to spend all our time on this one idea. It's, it is a little, even more complicated than this because there are other possible things that the ammonium could have come from. Wait, but, so uh, is there a way of deciphering between these two options now? Well, usually these problems have multiple clues. So based on what I've told you, there's no way of telling, but there yeah. will presumably yeah. be other clues, other things that you can do. Okay. All right, so when, I don't know if you've done any of these problems yet, but the way they work is, he says, suppose that you have an octopeptide, mm -hmm. and he gives you eight blanks, right. and he says, we are gonna progressively fill in the blanks. I'm gonna give you one set of clues, and then you're gonna tell me what you can figure out from those clues. Then I'll give you another set of clues, and you tell me what you can figure out from those clues, so until you finish the problem, you won't know most of the structure of the peptide. So the answer to many of the, uh, many of the parts will be an or. In many of the cases, you'll have to say it could be this or this. Only when you put all the clues together will you know exactly what it is. Why will putting them all together help you determine? That'll be easier to see if you actually start doing those problems. But in general, um, the more clues you have, the easier it is to nail down what the structure is. And then or comes with those splitting patterns, right? Later on, because he That's splits right. something split this way. I, mean, if you right. I don't know what. Okay. So uh, let's we'll see. So right. All right. So we've gone over the key ideas here anyway for um, total acid hydrolysis. There's still some uh, tricky things we haven't gone into, but we have the basic ideas now. So um, that gives us our uh, uh, our basics. So far, so good. And maybe we should go on to some of the other things that we need yes. for the the protein analysis. Okay.